Hi, George here. And we'll be looking at Photoshop Elements shapes today. There's a lot of these shapes. You'll find it right over here underneath this rectangle tool. And it's right down here below in the options. If you don't see the options, if you're seeing the photo bin instead, just click here where it says tool options and you'll see this. Now there are a bunch. There is the custom shape tool, the rectangular tool, the rounded rectangular tool, the ellipse tool, polygon, star, which is basically a polygon with the sides pushed in, a line, and there's also a shape selection tool. These shapes come in as vector graphics, which means that you can do a little bit of vector graphic control of these things. It's the only place where you can really do vector graphic stuff here inside of Photoshop Elements. Let's look at the simplest of this first, and that's the basic rectangle. A lot of these options will be the same for these other tools. If it is, I won't bother repeating that. The first one here, of course, is the color. This color comes in at whatever your current foreground color is over here in the color picker. If you want to change the color, just click on that color spot. You can then change it to any color you want. Let's just go for a kind of a magenta in here. Down below, we have different styles. Lots of styles, as you can see. These are the exact same styles that you'll find over here in the styles panel right there. So I normally would apply these afterwards. I wouldn't do these as I was making it. I'd apply them as a second step. A bit more controlled that way. But if you do one thing over and over again, use a style all the time, you may want to just do it right here as you're making your shape. It's up to you. Over here, this section allows you to control the shape and the ratio of your shape. Unconstrained means it'll be anything that you draw. Let's just do a little draw like that. Just pull and draw. Notice I can make this any size I want to. That's unconstrained. It then makes the shape once you let go of the mouse. Under Control Z to undo that. The next option here is a square. So now if I click and drag, it's going to always give me a square. Different size but always give me a square. Okay, control Z to undo that one. We have a fixed size. So I put in a fixed size, let's say 100 pixels by 100 pixels. If I just click in here, it's gonna automatically make it at that size with just one click. So you can be very precise about that. Notice that that came in when I click the upper left-hand corner. You see right there. If you want to, you can make this come in at the center. I'll just choose from center. And then it comes in at the center of where I click. Okay, let's just do Control Z to undo those. You also can set this at proportional. Let's say I wanted to have it too wide to one tall. If I then drag, it's always going to be in that proportion. I can change the size, but the proportion stays the same. Basically the same thing as doing a square. It's just a rectangle at a certain proportion. Okay, Control Z. Now the next over here we have these things. These are different ways of working with the shapes. The first one is a regular shape. I'm just going to set this here to unconstrained. And this just draws a shape just like that. The next one adds to your shape. If I make a new shape over here, it's going to add this shape to the existing shape. Notice up here on the layers, it's still one shape. It's not two layers, it's just one shape. If I go over here, this is subtract. I can cut a chunk out just like that. Notice that it's still just one shape up here. This one is an intersection. If I make a shape like this, where those shapes overlap, that becomes the new shape. You can see right there. Notice that all of the other shapes are still here, but only that part is showing. And then finally, exclude overlapping shape areas. Let me just control Z to back up on that one. And then I'll use the exclude. And I'll come down to the same exact thing. This time it doesn't include that, but it includes the other part. So just different ways of combining shapes as you're drawing them. Now I mentioned that these are vector graphics, if I go over here and grab this shape selection tool, I can actually click on a shape, grab the control handles, and then change the shape from those control handles. I can even rotate if I want to. So it's a vector graphic, and it gives me that ability to control the shape of that vector graphic. Okay, let's go back to that shape tool again. So that's what that does. I'll just go ahead and leave that one alone. You also can combine everything into one shape. There we go, click on combine. It's now just one shape, no longer separate pieces. Okay, so there's a lot of the standard stuff on how these tools work right there just in that first one. Now let's go over to the next one. I'm going to delete this layer here. Let's just trash that. Let's now go over here to the rounded rectangle. I'll choose a different color just for variety's sake. Choose a green. There we go. Radius says 10 pixels. Everything else is the same. But we now have this little radius thing right here, and that is the roundness of the corners. There's a radius of 10, and that size is based upon the size of your page. This is the default Photoshop element size. Let's change this to 100, so it'll be a much larger rounded corner, 10 times bigger. 
You see, there we go. So the radius right here controls how round the corner is. A small number closer to a sharp corner, a larger number, a more rounded corner. Okay, so that covers both the regular and rounded rectangles. Let's come down to the next line right down here. We'll come back to the, the custom shape towards the end of this whole discussion. Now the ellipse tool, let's just change our color again here. I'll go down kind of a blue color. Notice how whatever layer you're on also changes that color, but that's fine. The ellipse tool draws in an ellipse. Right now it's set to draw a circle. Kind of the same options we have unconstrained or circle or fixed size or proportional. And these all work exactly the same as they worked with the rectangle tool. Same thing over here, right hand side. These all work exactly the same. Let's set this at unconstrained. I can then come in and draw any kind of ellipse I want in here, just like that. Let go, and there's my ellipse. Now, notice that these all come in as smart object layers over here. That's that little funny icon on the layer. And that means that it is a specialty layer. In this case, these are vector layers. If you need to work with this with things like filters, you can't apply filters onto this kind of a layer. So you'll have to rasterize or simplify the layer. You can do it two ways. Either click on simplify right down here. Notice how that icon just went away. Let's come down one here. Or you can do it right from the layers. Right click on the name and you'll find simplify right there. Exact same thing. These are now both bitmap shapes. They're no longer vector graphics. They're raster graphics. Now because of that, I can no longer use the shape selection tool because it's been rasterized. If I come down to this layer, I can select that because I haven't changed that to a rasterized or simplified shape. Okay, let's just get rid of all this stuff in here. Hit that delete key, get rid of all that. There we go. Let's go to our next option in here. This is the polygon, simply a multi-sided shape. Let's change our color here to something different. I'll choose kind of a average yellow. It begins with six as the normal shape in here and just pull it in, you get six sides. So you can choose any kind of thing you want. A triangle is a polygon with three sides. A square is a polygon with four sides. A pentagon has five sides and six sides, seven sides, eight sides. You can keep on going up on these things if you want to. Let's just make one here at eight sides. There we go, there's an eight side. It's kind of like a stop sign right there, eight sides on it. We can come down here and smooth the corners. That's our one option. Kind of a rounded corner thing in here. Notice that we don't have control over the roundness of the corners on this particular tool, but they do come in as rounded corners. Again, everything else stays the same. Let's delete all of that stuff. The star is just like the polygon, except that it has indented sides, and you control how much the indent is right here. Set this at 50% indent. I'll go for a different color again. Let's just go for magenta. I can smooth the indents and I can smooth the corners. Look at that in just a second. Same thing, you just come in here and you draw that and there's your standard star shape. This is the one that you always see on flags and things like that. If I smooth the indents, do the exact same thing. Notice how the indents are smoothed out. That's basically what the sides were. If I smooth the corners and not the indents, I get that. If I smooth both of them, we have that kind of shape. So these are all just variations of the basic star shape, controlling the smoothness in here of those indents. And again, everything else here stays the same. Okay, that's all of our basic shapes. Let's now take a look at the line tool, which is our next one. And let's get this out of here. For the line tool, I'll just change this to a black right here. Here's our line tool. You can control the width right here. Right now it's set at 10 pixels and there it is with a 10 pixel line. Now what you can do in here is you can put arrows on this at the start, at the end, or at both ends. So here's at the start, there's my start point. It's an arrow at the start. Here's an arrow at the end, right there. And here's an arrow at both ends. So you can make arrows to point to different things on your page if you want to. Notice down here, I can come in and control the width, the length, and the concavity of the arrowhead as a percentage of the length. Let me just change this. I'll set the concavity here to 40%. And we'll do that. And you can see how that gives us more of a pointed bit. That's that indent on the back end of the arrow. That's what that concavity is right down here where it says 40%. So the higher the number, the more that is cut in at the inside of the arrow. 
at the back side of the arrowhead. Okay, so now go to the fancy stuff, and that's our custom shapes right here. And I'll just delete all of this stuff. We don't need any of that. Now the custom shapes are the exact same thing as you have if you go over here to the graphics and change this in here to shapes. Same thing. Either do it from the shape tool over here or do it from this menu over here, right hand side. I kind of like the right hand side shapes personally. It's just easier to see them very quickly here. Just kind of scroll down and see what you want. There's a bunny, for instance. Just puts a bunny on here. I can then change the size of my bunny just like that. Just get rid of that one and I'll go back to our layers. Again, comes in as a standard shape layer. It even says shape on the layer. We'll trash that. If you want to use it from the shape tool, it's right down here. Click on the arrow. You can then see the different shapes. Now the default is just a small selection in here. Click on this drop down list and you have all the different categories, animals, animals to arrows, banners and awards, and so forth, all the way down to tiles, where I can show all elements shapes. And this is the same list. It's a different sequence, but it's the same list that you have over on the graphics panel right hand side. And I can just scroll down as you can see in here, lots and lots of these different shapes. And they work exactly the same. Let's find that same rabbit again. There it is. Same exact rabbit. Of course, I can change the color in here. Let's make this kind of a brown rabbit. There's a good brown color right there. And there's our rabbit in brown. Notice one thing though, if I come in here, I can actually change the shape as I'm pulling this in. That doesn't happen with the graphics panel, but I can change it later on. And that's because this is set at unconstrained. You can do defined proportions, defined size, fixed size, basically the same options you have with the rectangle or the ellipse. Now this next option right here, different styles. Again, you can apply your styles right here. This is a inner ridge bevel like that. Or you can apply those from the right-hand side styles panel. I prefer using the styles panel. I'll just use the Control Z keyboard shortcut to undo that one. Let's go over here to the styles panel. And there's that same option right here, inner ridge. Notice if you roll over these, you can see what the name says, scalloped edge, simple emboss, simple outer. Now what these are, are layer styles being applied to that layer. If we come down to layers, you'll see there's that little layer style option right here. Click on that and it brings up the style settings. The style settings here inside of Photoshop Elements are very limited. We have drop shadow, glow, bevel, and stroke. There's an inner glow and outer glow, but that's not much. And the stroke can be outside, inside, or on the center. Again, not many options on that. You have more options if you use the styles right over here. One of the options is that you can have sharp edges. This first bunny, I'll come down here to that shape. It's our first bunny. If we go up here to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and let's give this a bevel. Notice how the bevel comes in as a rounded edge bevel. It's a soft bevel. That's the only option you have here is that soft bevel. If you want to apply a hard or chiseled bevel onto your shape, let me show you that, click on cancel. That's where using the styles either here or again, back down on our list right down here, same thing. Come down here and there's this one. This is a simple sharp inner and there's your chiseled edge right there, a sharp edge as opposed to the rounded soft edge. Now, once you've applied the edge here using the styles, you can go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and then adjust that bevel right here. So you can make it larger or smaller once it's been applied. So you can use a hard edge or a chiseled bevel here very easily. You can even go for up or down on that, just a lighting or shadow thing. And you can control it here. So the different styles allow you to do some of these things that you can't easily do from the normal layer styles dialog box. There are a lot of these in here. Again, all this stuff is also available down there inside of the options for the shapes. We have some complex things. Like that's kind of strange. I'll do control Z to undo that. Just an idea. Drop shadows, different drop shadows, like that kind of a lined drop shadow. So you want the real fancy shapes or real fancy effects. This is the way you get those fancy effects is using these styles as opposed to using the layer style. It's an outer line that's kind of Kind of fun. There's some different strokes, real thick stroke on that one. And then we have these wow chrome effects. They look pretty good. And a neon effect, like that kind of neon outline effect. Wow plastic effect. There we go. 
Now, as long as this is still a shape, we can go over here and grab that shape selection tool, click on the shape, and I can then adjust that right here just by stretching it, or I can spin it around and have that ability to control that shape. Again, as long as it's just a basic vector graphic, which means I haven't simplified that layer. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, make sure you click on subscribe. Now my channel is supported by fans. If you wanna help support my channel, allow me to keep on making videos here on YouTube, then take a look at my complete training course. That helps out a lot. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Or you can send me a super thanks. It's basically a tip on this video. Or if you want to support me on a monthly basis, take a look at my Patreon account. There's a link for that also right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.